Tim Peake joins me now. I love those scenes of jubilation. It's fun because we were all like this. Is it going to work? Is it going to work? It's been incredible, hasn't it? Good morning, Lorraine. Yeah, it's great to join you. And it was, I mean, they, they call it the seven minutes of terror because of, of course, the, the delay in the communication coming back from Mars and, and everyone at Mission Control just waiting to have hopefully positive news of this landing. But such an audacious landing. It's incredible. Uh, I mean, landing on Mars is really, really difficult. So you can understand their joy and elation of achieving it. Oh, it is one. And the pictures are extraordinary. And the way that we've been able to hear the noise of the wind on Mars, it's, it's just astonishing, isn't it? It is. You have to pinch yourself that you're, and remind yourself you're looking at us landing something on a planet that's over 400 million kilometres away. And, you know, it's used parachutes, it's used retro rockets, it's hovered there with a sky crane and then lowered a one tonne rover onto the surface and then driven away. It's absolutely remarkable. It's amazing. And the mission, obviously, is to get as much data and information as we can, but also to look for any sign of life, which... God, could you imagine? That'd be amazing. I mean, this this is so it's exciting about this mission in particular, because, yes, it's specifically there. Perseverance is the rover that has been designed from the outset to look for signs of life. And the location as well, the Jezero crater, has been specifically chosen because we think that's where one of the great chances of finding past signs of life on Mars is. And, you know, three billion years ago, Mars and Earth were actually really quite similar. Mars had a liquid ocean, about a third of the surface covered in water. It was a much denser, a much warmer atmosphere. So the conditions were there for life to evolve on Mars. And, you know, if we if we find signs of past life, microbial organisms on Mars, that's going to be, you know, change our understanding of life throughout the universe fundamentally. No, exactly. And um, a wee bit more important than Harry and Meghan, to be honest, just a little bit, <laughs> just a wee bit. Now, as well as all of this going on, we're looking for new astronauts. Now, look, Tim, I'm ready. I've got the outfit, I've done a wee bit of the training. I, want, I was always wanted to be an astronaut and I'm still waiting to grow up, so there we are. But seriously, we're looking for the next generation, aren't we? We are, yeah, I think you're really well prepared, Lorraine. <laughs> uh, but yes, we're looking for we're looking for the next generation, which uh, again, really exciting because we're talking about Mars. And of course, the moon is the next step for human exploration before those human missions to Mars. But as you mentioned in that uh, trailer, you know, about the space hotel, these things are not far away. We're really on the cusp of a new golden era of space exploration. So these new astronauts that the European Space Agency is now looking for are going to have a really exciting future not just to the International Space Station, but the moon and who knows, perhaps beyond. And also it's, it's open to, to everyone, really. I mean, you, you know, you might as well apply. You never know. Absolutely. I mean, I'm really trying to encourage everyone, you know, who thinks that they ever dreamt of exploring, who wants to be part of a brilliant international team, you know, pushing the boundaries of what we're doing in space, in science and exploration. Give it a shot. I mean, I was one of those people back in 2008, one and eight and a half thousand people and, you know, made it through the selection process. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. Well, you are a very special man, to be fair. Now, look, tell me about my journey to space, because obviously with lockdown, these kind of things, you know, the tour that you were doing had to be put back, but it's definitely back on, isn't it? It is back on, yes, October, November, December, uh, 30 venues up and down the country. So I'm really looking forward to it. Um, you know, I think everybody is, is so fed up with lockdown. It's been such a tough and a terrible time for so many people. So it's nice to have things to look forward to where we can actually, you know, be together again and enjoy things face to face. So I'm really excited about it, really looking forward to it. And it's going to be a great show. Oh, it really is. I mean, I'm at the front of the queue because obviously you can talk about your own experiences, but as well as that, looking ahead, to what's out there, things that we've just been talking about now, you can go into such depth about that. And I love the Q&A as well, because some of the questions are, especially from, especially from young people, don't you find that the kids ask really good questions? I think I think the kids always ask the questions that the adults are often embarrassed to ask, and so I find them I find them the best questions. I'm also most nervous about the kids' questions. You're never quite sure what's coming up, but it's it's brilliant, and I, I love answering all of them. Oh, it's it, it really is. And I just wondered. I know you were a celebrity supply teacher um, for children's TV, which was a great series. How did that compare to homeschooling? 
<laughs> well, actually, it, it helped for a, for a morning there because I was able to kind of get my own kids involved in the lessons. Uh, yeah, homeschooling, I know it's been stressful for everybody, but the things like the the celebrity supply teacher, and I know that the scouts did a lot of work with the Great Indoors campaign. I mean, these things have been so good to help give parents something else to, to you know, focus their children's attention on and to help the learning process in such an unusual environment as well. Oh, it's great. I feel as if we're in a really good place now as far as space travel as far as, as far as all of that goes you know there was a lull for a long time I don't know if you've seen this show there's a show just now on Apple it's called to um, to serve mankind and it's about I don't know if you've seen it but you I would love to sit and watch it with you because you could poke loads of holes in it mm -hmm. but it's about the fact that the Russians land on the moon before the Americans which means NASA's funding gets upped and it means that we have things like mobile phones and electric cars in the 1980s very interesting I, I it's really, it's a fascinating concept. I haven't seen this, uh, but but you're absolutely right. It's all about, you know, uh, what happens at what time throughout history. And um, and what's exciting for the future as well is, you know, not only is it just space exploration, but we've got things like artificial intelligence. Uh, we've got quantum computers, possibly nuclear fusion. We always talk about this being 20 years away, but these are technologies yeah. that are starting to get really close and, and that will hopefully help us you know tackle some of the big problems that we're facing today. Exactly that's the thing it's all about seeking answers. Do you think you'll ever get back up again? I certainly hope so yes. So um, I'm looking forward to watching Thomas Pesquet, my French classmate, fly later Aww. this year and Samantha Cristoforetti and Matthias Maurer will be after them. So yeah Andreas and myself are, are certainly hoping for second missions too. Well, I should hope so. John Glenn did it when he was an old age pensioner and you're a very young man with loads and loads of time ahead of you. So I hope it happens. And I really look forward to seeing you in real true life. And obviously I'll be there to watch you on, on the tour. I'm really looking forward to that. Tim, it's always a joy. Thank you so much. Thanks very much, Lorraine. Great talking Great to you. Great to see you. Thank you very, very much indeed. One of the loveliest men and a true, true hero. Right. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.